single most important thing in creating a high performance organization is uh, fundamentally engaging the employees in the organization, the people who um, are closest to the action, uh, regardless of where they fit in the organization, directly involving them in solving the problems of the organization, not asking them their opinion, not giving them, uh, telling them what you're going to do, and then asking whether they think it's a good idea, but actually asking them what the problem is, what the cause of the problem is, what the solution is, and how to go about fixing it. If employees choose to be represented by a union, it is absolutely crucial and essential that the unions be at the table and involved and engaged in the same way that its members. Engagement strategies, whether it's Six Sigma, um, Lean, any of those things that do not involve the union are not sustainable and in fact will be undermined over a long period of time. What's in it for the employees? Most importantly is a, an engagement strategy, a high performance organization, gives employees the power to actually make differences in their own work. Most people really want to do a good job at work and what happens in traditional organizations is they aren't listened to, they aren't given the opportunity, uh, they don't have the power, they are in many cases may not have the information or the skills in order to do what they know needs to be done. In these types of organizations what it does is it gives them the power and the voice in order to be heard, in order to make a difference themselves, and actually to change their own behavior to deliver better results. There have been numerous studies published by a wide range of different universities, uh, not-for-profit uh, foundations, as well as a lot of individual companies that have documented the transformation and the results that get out of this. The evidence is overwhelming that the improvement in performance that comes from developing a culture of engagement is substantially, we're not talking single digits, we're talking double digits, healthy double digit improvements in overall operating performance. The numbers that are often most commonly thrown around is a 20 to 30 percent improvement in overall uh, operating improvements. So you get that much more for whatever inputs that you have in the organization. Many, many managers are actually very comfortable with average performance. Most managers do not spend a lifetime in a particular job, and from their point of view, there is less risk. Um, they are not under pressure to deliver um, more than average um, results. So the safest thing for them to do, the most comfortable thing for them to do, is not to change, but to actually maybe make some superficial changes, but to continue doing what they're doing. There are real risks for unions to engage as a, uh, what seems to be a partner with a management that's not serious about change. In no way should the union be a tool for management to point to the fact that they're actually making change when they haven't made change. The workers will see through it, the employees, the union members will see through it. They know whether there is real engagement, they know whether it's a facade, and if the union's seen at the side when it is a facade, when it's not real change, then it'll undermine the credibility of the union. Most organizations that start this transformation, unions and management, are not uh, working together. They are frequently at odds with each other. There may be a long history of distrust uh, and confrontation, but in my experience over the last 35 years is that's not a barrier to change. The way that the trust and the credibility is built together is, first of all, there is a shared understanding that there is either a need to change or that there is a better way of working. It does require both sides understanding that there need to build trust, but the way we found the most effective way to build that relationship, the constructive relationship, the foundation for a true high engagement, high performance organization is by working together, getting in the trenches together to deal with tough problems and do it in a structured way. In many cases, using initially the first few times, using that outside third party to help facilitate it and keep it on track. 
But to go through that battle and when people come out and they see that they've really been able to solve problems by working together, it changes how they relate to each other and they will understand the critical importance of having trust, which means that when they deal with each other in the future, they'll be much more open and honest and straightforward in what they're doing with each other. Outside consultants can play a very important role to help organizations become much more successful. However, if the role of the consultant is to come in, analyze, and tell you what to do, then it'll never work. The reason it'll never work is because, one, they actually don't really understand what's going on in the same way that the people closest to the action do. Secondly, uh, so at that point in time, they're merely filters of information. Secondly, they have no ownership over it. The people who have to do it are the people that have to own the solution. They're the closest to it. They can understand it the best. They may need some outside guidance and expertise. They may need some extra tools, in which case looking for outside support can be valuable. But if the consultants are coming in and telling you what to do, how to do it, they're doing the analysis, then there's going to be no ownership inside the organization, and there's going to be no uh, ownership by the front line. There's going to be no ownership by the management. And as soon as the consultants leave, it's very easy to just to dismiss the results and move back. One of the most dominant behaviors that you find in an organization is passive-aggressive, where people are told what to do, they don't own it, they don't believe it, they aren't committed to it, they'll go through the motions. PSA, several years ago, developed a sustainable uh, work systems um, uh, conceptual framework for how to deal with a workplace. They basically are right on target with what needs to be done. It lays out the, the philosophical framework, it lays out the correct uh, rationale for why to do it, and it lays out the basic structure of how these sorts of organizations um, need to work. Conceptually, it gets it right. It is it will produce a much better environment for its members. Uh, it will lead to much more successful organizations. So it's it's truly at the standard of world class in terms of thinking about how high-performing organizations operate.